So fermented foods have been around for pretty much forever, but they seem to be even more in fashion now. The rainbow-colored selection of kombucha tea, the fridges full of miso and kefir and tempeh and sauerkraut. You can't toss a gluten-free cookie without hitting a live and active cultures label. Those live and active cultures are actually a thriving community of probiotic bacteria living in the container. Probiotic bacteria literally just means good germs. By definition, microorganisms that instead of giving you strep throat or gonorrhea or something worse are beneficial and maybe even make your life possible. These bacteria help balance out the microflora foam party going on in your intestines and keep pH levels in check. They block bad bacteria from latching onto your intestinal walls, help you produce digestive enzymes so you don't get all bloated after that third burrito, and increase your nutrient uptake. And they do it! basically by eating our food for us. Essentially, the foods that these microorganisms feast on and the foods that we buy them in undergo a chemical transformation that's basically controlled rotting. So if you prefer, you could think of probiotic foods as being partially rotten or pre-digested. You probably don't prefer that. Like it or not, though, they're what turn milk into yogurt, soy into tempeh, and cabbage into sauerkraut, a special kind of fermentation. Fermentation is a type of anaerobic respiration where microorganisms feed on organic compounds, often sugars, to get the energy they need but they do it in the absence of oxygen. While most of us are familiar with the fermentation that turns hoppy water into beer or grape juice into wine, those kinds of cultures are usually yeasts, and they produce alcohol as a byproduct. The cultures in probiotic foods, by contrast, are usually bacteria, and they break down sugars to make lactic acid. This is known as lacto-fermentation in the star of the show here, and by here I mean your intestines, is Lactobacillus acidophilus. It's a bacterium that lives naturally in your gut, but its numbers can dwindle if you've been taking antibiotics, had a nasty gastrointestinal bug, or if your innards are just generally bad bacteria farmers. What's particularly excellent about lactobacilli is that they're salt tolerant, whereas various bad bacteria, like the kinds that spoil our food and make us sick, are not. So by, say, submerging cucumbers in salty water for a few days, we can keep out the bad germs that would rot our cukes while still courting the good bacteria, which partially digest those vegetables, converting lactose and other sugars into lactic acid, and turning the cucumbers into pickles. So remember, fermenting is not the same thing as pickling. Non-refrigerated foodstuffs you find at the market, like those jars of pickles and sauerkraut getting dusty on the shelf, were just dumped into vinegar and never fermented. Fermented foods, many of which have that live and active cultures label, are a lot easier to digest precisely because they've been partially digested for us, and in a manner much cleaner than, say, a mama bird regurgitating a mouthful of worm mush to her babies. So in addition to eating that semi-decomposed cucumber, you're also ingesting the friendly bacteria that so helpfully started the digestion process. That's the double benefit of lactose fermentation. We spend a lot of time and effort trying to limit our exposure to bacteria, but the fact is we would die without them. Your body, glorious shrine to hygiene that it may be, contains about 100 trillion bacteria. That's more than 10 times the number of your own cells that you have in your body. Which sort of means that you're more bacteria than you are you. Thanks for watching this episode of SciShow. If you have any questions or comments or ideas for us, we're down in the comments below and on Facebook and Twitter. And if you want to keep getting smarter with us here at SciShow, you can go to youtube.com slash SciShow and subscribe. Thank you